Doctor of Medicine in the University of Utah School of Medicine. And lately we've been developing this academic friendship. And this is about um, kind of in line with doc what Dr. Hoke said about obesity, metabolically healthy and unhealthy. What does that mean? And that's what Dr. Bedu gonna say. I just wanted to let you know he's the initiator of that movement of walking extra two minutes every hour can help you so much. I wish he can address some of those points too. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Shweta. Morning. I thank the organizers for giving the opportunity to talk about this topic. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the uh, obesity as a risk factor for heart failure and CKD, and then the obesity paradox and established heart failure and CKD, and what the clinical implications are. Uh, before we get to the, about obesity, we got to define it. So as you all know, body mass index is what's used to define obesity. Um, a BMA of uh, less than 25, 18.5 uh, to less than 25 is considered normal. 25, 29.9 is considered overweight, and 30 or more is considered obesity. That's based upon BMI. Based upon the waist circumference, it's more than 30 inches in women or 40 inches in men. This is not about the red states and blue states. This is not about politics. This is about obesity. So uh, this is a slide from CDC looking at the prevalence of obesity defined based upon the BMI uh, from 1990, 98, and 2007. And this is the uh, prevalence of obesity, le less than 10% of the population, and this more than 30% of the population. And as you can see, the country is shifting from blue to red based upon the obesity index. So, obesity is a risk factor for heart failure. And uh, one of the uh, important studies in this topic is, uh, was from the Framingham uh, cohort. Uh, they looked at about 6,000 participants, and um, of them, uh, $500 heart failure over 14 years of follow-up. And these are women, these are men, and we're looking at the uh, years of follow-up and looking at the incidence of uh, heart failure. Obese persons have higher risk for heart failure than people normal BMI, that's BMI of 18.5 uh, to less than uh, 25, and overweight uh, was in between. That we see that pattern both in men, and, uh, women, and men. So this is a Cox model looking at the hazard ratio for the heart failure, and uh, looking at overweight. Obesity class one, obesity class two, and the normal weight being the reference group of one. As you can see, the risk of uh, heart failure goes up with increasing BMI, 1.2 fold higher for overweight, 1.8 fold higher for obesity class one, and 2.8 for obesity class two. This is in men, the results are similar for women too. So uh, this is looking at okay. This is looking at uh, obesity as a risk factor for ESRD. Uh, this is again a large study looking about uh, 300,000 people from the Kaiserpron database, and they linked uh, the insurance uh, from the insurance database to the ESRD system, which is the National Registry of Dialysis Patients, and. Um, they used Cox models. There are about 1471 cases of ESRD that occurred over about 8 million years of a person years of follow up. Again, using the BMA of 18.5, as the reference, people who had a BMA less than 18.5 had lower risk of developing ESRD, and people BMA more than 40 had seven fold higher risk of ESRD. And um, even overweight as well as obese also at higher risk of ESRE. So obesity is a risk factor for a heart failure in ESRD. Then the question is, 
what are the effects of our association of obesity with mortality in those established heart failure or ESRD. So this is data from the CHARM study, about 8,000 participants uh, in the candy Sutton trial. And all uh, these are participants with uh, NYHA class two or class four with a mean ejection fraction of around uh, 39%. And what we are looking at is the uh, BMA categories and um, the, the uh, incidence of uh, all cause death and the uh, follow up time. So, in the BMA categories, those BMA less than 22.5, those are the, uh, the lowest BMI, they had the highest risk of death. And people with, uh, who are obese, BMA more than 30 or 35, they had lower risk of death. These are people established heart failure. And then the other two BMA groups kind of fell in between. And if you do the adjusted models, uh, they use the 30 to 34.9 obese group as a uh, reference and looked at the risk of death in people ejection fraction less than 40 at baseline or more than 40. Doesn't matter which way you slice and dice the data, you see the similar results that uh, whether EF is low at baseline or not, you still see people establish heart failure having a higher risk of death if the BMA is lower. Compared to this group, the obesity class two, that's more, BMA more than 35, had a non-significant increase in the risk of uh, death. So uh, it's a meta-analysis uh, done by Sharma et al. Um, uh, of BMI and heart failure, looking at some of the major uh, studies in the field. And they related the uh, uh, the different BMI categories and looking at the relative risk of three different outcomes here. One is the total mortality, that's the blue line. The green is a cardiac mortality, and the re heart failure is the red one. What you're seeing is that in people who are severely obese or obese, the risk of death is lower, but they do have a higher risk of rehospitalization. And those who have lower BMI to begin with, with heart failure, they have higher risk of both rehospitalization as well as uh, increased uh, all cause death and cardiovascular death. So, this is uh, switching gears to the CKD part of it. So, uh, this is BMI in mortal and dialysis patients. This data from ESRDS, uh, Kristen Johansson from UCSF uh, looked at this, looking at uh, people BMI of 22 to 25 as a reference and looking at the uh, risk of death, as you can see, people with lower BMI had a higher risk of death, and people who are obese or higher BMI have lower risk of death than the normal BMI group. So this is in dialysis patients, similar to what we are talking about in the uh, heart failure population. And this also has been pretty consistent. There are zillion studies. People have made career out of this, uh, studying the same thing, again and again, publishing the uh, same data. But uh, the bottom line is it's a pretty consistent finding that higher BMI in dialysis patients, lower risk of death. So what explains BMI paradox? Is it body composition? By body composition, I mean is it fat versus muscle? or is it something else? So um, the amount of urinary creatinine is a reflection of muscle mass. So the creatinine excretion per day is a reflection of muscle mass. And uh, we looked at the USRDS data and um, looked at uh, the Form 2728, the nephrologists in the room know what I'm talking about, and looked at the uh, 24 creatinine Based upon the serum creatinine, the creatinine report in the form 2728, we calculated the 24 unit creatinine excretion, and we defined low muscle mass as urinary creatinine less than 550 milligrams per day. It was the low, uh, lowest quartile. 
similar to what has been reported before, we see that people with higher BMI compared to normal BMI have better survival. So this is looking at the uh, probability of survival and high BMI better survival than normal BMI. And then when you look at uh, the BMI and the uh, urine creatinine groups, so people with high BMI and high urine creatinine had the best survival, and people with normal BMI and low urine creatinine had the worst survival. So the other two groups fall in between, um, indicating that it's not only the, uh, not only the uh, body size, but also the body composition matters. This is uh, from a different, um, uh, looking at the fat mass and survival. So this is looking at the body fat percentage and the risk of death. And this does show that in dialysis patients, people with low body fat percentage have low, have high, lower survival and people with higher body fat percentage do better. And um, if you do it with the DEXA scan and measure the body fat uh, that way, for each kilogram increase in fat mass, the hazard ratio for all cause death went down by 15%. So uh, uh, fat mass also matters. So how do you put these things together? So people who are malnourished with low BMI and low muscle mass, they have the worst survival. People who are obese have better survival, and these guys have the best survival. Okay, people with uh, high BMI and high muscle mass. So the questions that we need to ask are, um, I'm not going to details of this, but the question that we need to ask are, so what are the molecular mechanisms by which adipose results in insulin resistance, inflammation, oxidative stress, atherosclerosis in the general population? And um, what are those mechanisms are, does uremia or heart failure, do those conditions modify these metabolic effects of adiposity? If they don't modify the metabolic effects, do they modify the mortality effects of adiposity? So, uh, in other words, the question is, what do the adipocytes do? My wife says this describes me perfectly well. But adipocyte is no couch potato. So uh, when there's increase, uh, increase in fat mass, there is decrease in the uh, oxygenation in the adipose tissue, and there is increased oxidative stress, which leads on to uh, increased production of different proteins, including TNF-alpha, IL-6, leptin, et cetera, and this decreased adiponectin. Dr. Kumar Sharma has done pioneering work on adiponectin. Um, uh, this is a pretty, it's a very big field. Um, the bottom line is that the fat tissue is, in fact, one of the largest endocrine, is the largest endocrine organ in the body. It produces a lot of different proteins which have a lot of metabolic effects. And, the net effect of all those things is that you have insulin resistance, there's inflammation, there's atherosclerosis, anemia, coronary calcification, heart failure, kidney failure, all those things which lead to death. So, in other words, what we are talking about is that for obesity, there are metabolic effects mediated through the adipokines. And there's also an effect called nutritional effect. Uh, I, it's a difficult thing to characterize, but I'll tell, show you in a minute what I mean by that. And the nutritional effects decrease the risk for death. The metabolic effects increase risk for death. And whether obesity leads to increased risk for death or decreased risk for death depends on the balance between these two. And that could be modified based upon different conditions. Again, going back to the heart failure story, so the meta-analysis I just showed you that people who are severely obese have lower risk of death, but they still have higher risk for 
recurrent heart failure. So the metabolic effects are still there. Okay, they still have heart failure. The effects of obesity and heart failure still persist. But even if you have an episode of heart failure, if you're obese, the chance of you surviving the heart failure is higher. That may probably be, the, that's a nutritional effect. That may be the reason why these people may have low risk of death, even though they have higher risk of heart failure. On the other hand, people low BMI, when they have heart failure, when they have another episode of heart failure, they are also, they don't tolerate the heart failure the same way as people who are obese, and they may have increased risk of death. And um, Sean Elliott was apparently playing basketball, uh, NBA finals with the serum green of nine. Um, that tells you that muscle mass and nutrition can have a strong effect. Um, so getting back to the hypothetical and the BMA paradox, so in people without heart failure, it's like the metabolic effects of obesity dominate the nutritional effects. Then uh, without heart failure, if, you have, if you're obese, you have higher risk of death. On the other hand, if you have heart failure and obese, the metabolic effects still persist, but they dominate the nutritional effects, then the net overall effect is that there's decreased risk of death. Same thing may be happening in CKD too. So in people without CKD, the metabolic effects dominate the nutritional effects. So if, you're, if you don't have CKD and you're obese, you're high risk of death. I didn't show you the data on this, but we looked at the atherosclerosis skin community's data. And in people with CKD, um, if you're obese, non diabetes dependent CKD, if you're obese, the risk of death is not uh, higher. In ESRD, on the other hand, the metabolic effects that's due to the adipokines um, is dominant with nutritional effects. So if you're obese, you still end up with low risk of death. So then the question is, what do you do with all this information? And what do you do with uh, obesity and heart failure or CKD? This is what I do in my practice. I don't focus on weight. Um, as I said before, there's evidence that fat is good in dialysis patients as well as in heart failure, but muscle is better. So uh, I think the focus should be on increasing the muscle mass, decrease the fat mass, and how do you do that? You, uh, it could be done by focusing on increasing the moderate vigorous activity. That's the increased activity over 150 minutes per week is what's recommended. But remember that 150 minutes per week is only about 2% of the time that we awake, okay? So even if somebody goes jogging for 150 minutes per week, they still have 90% of their time to be sitting around, and that's a sedentary behavior. So the, uh, it's also important to decrease sedentary behavior and um, increasing the uh, light activities and decreased sedentary behavior is important. And finally, a healthy diet is important. And uh, whenever we talk about a healthy diet, it's obviously fruits and vegetables are a major component of that. Then people ask, uh, what about people advanced CKD? We can't uh, because of potassium restriction is an issue. While that's an issue, there are a lot of, uh, lot of fruits and vegetables that are low in potassium and the National Kidney Foundation has a nice website on potassium uh, for CKD, and that uh, you can advise your patients to increase the fruits and vegetables, even with advanced CKD, but if they take the low potassium um, uh, fruits and vegetables. So um, that's where I stop. Thank you.